Hi, this is Helena Gerdner, and I'm a PhD student at the University of Bonn, working for the Globetrot project. And today I introduce you into my work, a global grace-based data assimilation framework for hydrological drought detection. Drought affected more people worldwide than any other natural hazard, and it has impact on agriculture, the society, and economy. Usually, the drought detection is based on fluxes or surface waters, like, for example, precipitation or stream flow. Subsurface water storages are rarely used for the drought detection. And the observations, like in situ observations for subsurface water storages, are sparse in time and space and sometimes difficult to derive, for example, for groundwater. This is where GRACE comes in. Um, GRACE was launched in 2002 and ended in 2017 as a follow-up mission, GRACE follow-in. And GRACE can observe changes in total water storage. So this means the sum of surface and subsurface waters. The challenge about GRACE is that it has a coarse spatial resolution. So um, precipitation can be very local, so drought can also be very local. This means GRACE might be too coarse for using a drought monitoring. Another way would be to use hydrological models. These hydrological models have a finer resolution, for example, 50 kilometers, and they disaggregate into the different vertical storages. However, these models do not perfectly represent the reality because they are underlying assumptions and uh, are based on uncertainties of forcing data. So we combine on both sources to improve our analysis. Before one combine that, um, we need to pre-process our GRACE data. Um, in previous work, we pre-processed GRACE in that way that we computed basin averages, for example, for one of these 140 um, basins that you can see here. And um, this was then assimilated. Now we shift to the framework that we can use a four degree global grid. And um, this enables us that we can observe 95% of the land surface area except Greenland and Antarctica. And we can then assimilate this into the data assimilation framework. Yeah, so we get a higher detail with a more costly error propagation. We chose four degree because um, going to lower degrees, like for example, 0.5, um, then it might uh, come up that rank deficits uh, in the covariance matrices appear. The concept that we use for the data assimilation is the ensemble-based Kalman filter. And the ensemble-based Kalman filter has at the beginning a state that is perturbed by the ensemble members. And then for each ensemble members, we forecast, uh, we do a forecast, which is then updated with the real observations. And in between, we find our new state. And this procedure is repeating. We furthermore use the parallel data assimilation framework, which enables us optimizing the processes. For the drought detection, we use drought indicators. They help us characterizing the droughts and have different um, properties, for example, timing and severity. And the severity, um, for example, says us if we have an exceptional drought, this is better uh, to handle than with a numerical value. Uh, we made a study that compared different grace-based indicators um, because each of them has advantages and disadvantages that you should be aware of when analyzing the drought. One example is the drought severity indicator, the DSI uh, from Zao et al. And with this indicator, we show you some results now. Yeah, so on the left, you have um, the model. On the right, you have the observations. And in between, you have the data assimilation, all for South Africa. And you clearly can see that we can downscale grays. Um, so we have a higher spatial resolution. And you see we have higher intensities close to Lesotho, for example, than in the model. So we get a different insight of drought here. And it is more realistic as compared to grays. We can find some proofs in the literature for that. And now we shift our framework towards the global extension. So the previous results were um, used, um, were done with the method from the basin averages, but now we are showing the results for the four degree race assimilation. And here you also can clearly see uh, in our preliminary results that we can clearly downscale grace, which is great, great. Now it is on a global range. Yeah, so key messages, the data assimilation enables uh, spatially vertically downscaling while improving the realism of the model. And we are able with our framework to assimilate about 95% of the global land surface. Thank you for listening.